Welcome to part three of our Blender tutorial it's on curves. We are we are today looking at bevels and tapers. I have always found these extremely difficult to work with and extremely frustrating. And I definitely don't know a lot about them, but I know enough to get by. And hopefully that's what I'll pass on to you today. Right. First of all, Shift A. We are going to go through and put in two curves. A circle, shift A, we're also going to put in a Bezier curve. Okay, now, we can make one of these curves follow the other and give it like a type of skin. Okay, and they call this beveling. I'm going to press N to get rid of this um, details panel here. Drag this across a little bit. Let's um, keep this one in the middle right clicked, so we're all good with that. We're going to go across to the Object Data tab. And down in object data, we're going to click the bevel object. And there's only one option here for us to bevel it with. And that's a curved circle. Bam. Now what you can see here is that that um, curve we had in the middle has disappeared. Um, this other object is still there. I'll just grab this and I'll drag it out of the way. Okay, so that circle that was there at the beginning is still there. But our, our funny little Bezier curve is now gone not gone, just invisible in object mode. Pressing tab key, I can jump into edit mode, and you can see in there, you can still see that curve. I can go through and just like before, G for grab, right click, and, you, and I can go through and change that curve around, G for grab, and, um, and mess with it like I did before. Right clicking, G for grab, Okay, I can even go through and go shift click auto Rayu. auto handles shift click and I can go through and voila I've now created some tubing that circle has gone through all those curves now and it's happy as okay I'm gonna go through and click auto on all of them there we go so I've auto arised those ones just like we saw in the previous curves tutorial and of course I can go through and if I want to adjust them anyway I can cool I can even go through and turn them into vectors and now they're all sharp corners on them okay what's my point oh yes my point is this this object that I had out here this curve has been used to skin put a surface around that curve the cool thing is I can go through as I hate that I'm just going to get rid of that and put it back into auto mode oh that's nice no it's not all of them oops what I do there no idea all of them there I'm going to auto arise them all anyway distracted here I go back onto it again this object here has gone through and what it has that blue arrow the um, the Z axis pointing up it has gone through and pointed in that direction all the way through this this pipeline I can actually go into this and I can go through click the middle on there press V for vector and I've made that actually just point directly to the other two um, middle nodule things and as you can see, my entire curve up there has mimicked it. That point there is the spike on this entire thing there. Okay, so I'm clicking my mouse button in, middle mouse button to move it around. Okay, cool. I can go through and right click, shift, right click, S for scale, and just squeeze the entire thing in. And as you can see, I can manipulate this object and it immediately transfers to the skin on this tube. I can go through and adjust the, um, the resolution. I can bring the res resolution down and make it sharp, or bring the resolution up and make it smooth, and do exactly the same thing for this tube out here. Increase the resolution and make that tube look much smoother than it did before, than when it was at like 12 or less. Okay. Great, so that's really good. I've used that to skin this. I'm going to go through and delete everything. 
I'm going to add another circle and another Bezier curve. I found that it's a really, really good idea to go through and do most of your manipulation of these guys here in edit mode. Try to keep all the centers in the same place and I'll explain why in this next little section here. I'm now going to use this as my path, so to speak, and this one here as the, the, the structure. My blue arrow is going to go around okay, and create a shape like a, a pottery wheel plate type thing. Okay, here we go. That one there. Bevel object. My curve. Now you may be thinking, whoa, that just became awfully big all of a sudden. Well, the reason is because, you know how I said that blue arrow for that, that curve? Can you see it? That curve there. Follow the plate around. Well, see the center point? That's that, and that little tiny dot in the middle. That has been the thing that's followed the curve. Let me show you. There's my curve right there, and the center point that was on this other curve before has gone through and followed that point around. So there's a bit sticking out either side of the curve. It may make more sense, hopefully, if we go like this. Okay. Yes, I've got it. Edit mode. I can go through and adjust this around. G for grab. And now I'm increasing the length. The, the height of that. So as you can see there, that bump there corresponds to this bump right here that I've just created. Sharp edge. I can even grab this one here, move the entire thing in, and you'll see I'm opening up a hole in the middle. Okay, and that's exactly um, what I've done. I've sort of pulled it away from the edge there. Okay, and there's the center. The center that followed the curve around before, and now I'm pulling it back from there. I'm making it shorter, so now I can't quite reach. I could get this here, and control click outwards a little bit more, and I'm going through and increasing the features on the outside. Okay, so there I've made a dish. I could even work my way upwards if I wanted to, and make like a pottery bowl. Okay, that's another way you can use curves. Okay. Um, tab. Um, X. Delete. Yes, I want to delete it. And we're going to leave that there for now. Shift. I'm going to put a Bezier curve in here again. We're going to go through and scale that out. I'm going to make it into a worm like we had before. Okay. But I'm going to... Ooh, that's what happens when you scale the thing up, unfortunately. I'm going to scale this down. Okay, look from the top view, and we're going to look at these things called tapers. Shift A, I'm putting another Bezier curve, I'm going to drag it up here. Now, you know how I talked before about that point there being like um, the center of the object, the origin? We're going to use that again right now. This is a brand new thing. I know it looks exactly the same as that, but not. Okay, we're going to use this one here, which is called um, curve point zero zero one, and we're going to go into this one here, which has got the curve circle already on it. And we're going to give it a taper of this one up here. You notice the end's been pinched off. The end's been pinched off. Let's just get rid of that for now. We don't need it so much. Bring it down a bit so I can compare it. What it's doing is, this is the beginning of the curve over here. This is the end of the curve over there. As I go upwards from the center line, if I put it on that center line there, it makes more sense. It makes it pinch off, get fat, and then get thin again. Let's go through and mess around with it. Okay, grab and drag it up. Now, as you can see here, I'm increasing the fatness at the beginning, then it tapers off, and I can go through here, which you can grab, and I can increase the thinness down there. I can even go through at the very end, go control click, control click, and I can, oh, that just turned out all nasty, didn't it? Let's just get all those and we'll auto them. Make them all smoother. And as you can see at the beginning, thin. They all went below the line there. Okay, so thin, then really fat, and then not quite thin again. Notice it never went to the end again, never went to the zero mark. 
that results in a hole in the end. Okay, so it never went back to zero. I could get this, drag it down to zero, and pitch it off again if I wanted to. I could grab the one here, drag it up, and say, look, I don't want to be at zero right there. Okay, so yeah, that was sort of lumpy and awful. I can go through and I can increase the resolution like I did before to this curve here and make it smoother. And I can do the same thing on there and make it smoother also. Remember, if you're converting it into a uh, mesh afterwards, you will run into problems with it um, creating lots and lots of vertices. Anyway, that's part three of our curves tutorial. Have an excellent day.